my name is Serena Orr, and I'm a junior at Redford College, and today I'm doing a presentation on prejudices against poverty. So I'm going to start off with the history. Um, the history of prejudice against poverty is bad. They had bad hygiene, which then associated with poor people with the idea that they caused disease. Then they were not able to work hard manual labor, so they were looked down upon like as less than that they couldn't contribute to society. Uh, lack of education, basically that made them useless, quote unquote. It's, uh, it was hard for them to go up and down the classes because they don't have any education. And um, that the handicapped, the ill, and women, basically those in need, um, experience the most discrimination compared to those in upper classes. Next, I thought I found this interesting. This is a um, drawing from 1978 during the French Revolution. Um, it's the three classes, um, lower, middle, and upper. You can see that they're writing on the poor person and down. And in the bottom, it says you should hope that this game will be over soon. Different stereotypes are that poor people do not value education. In fact, are in fact, although they do not participate in school activities, they participate more at home with their children than those are wealthier, meaning that they promote more um, hands-on activities versus watching TV. Poor people are lazy, and it's actually found that um, poor people work on average 48 hours per week, which is more than those of upper classes. Um, poor people are substance abusers, and it was found that in the U.S., people in poverty are less likely to abuse alcohol than those of the wealthy, and that is actually consistent around the world. And when it comes to youth and substance abuse, um, all socioeconomic statuses are relatively the same. Oh, and then poor people are bad parents. And the um, reason why this is is because those in poverty have less access to after school activities than those of the wealthy, therefore making it seem that their parents don't include their children in anything. Um, my personal prejudice, prejudices are um, Dead Beasts Don't Drive. A little short history on this is that um, it's if a man doesn't pay child support, man or woman, doesn't pay child support for a certain amount of time, they will lose their license. I'm a full advocate for this, but now instead, now that the father of my child has lost his license, he doesn't work, or he can't get a job because he doesn't have a license, therefore he works under the table for cash, and I still don't get child support. So that's pretty well, that's how that worked out. Um, my work environment, um, I basically, whenever I do intakes at my work, and I just automatically accuse those who come in looking really trashy or don't provide any kind of income so much that they just are low lives, they don't want to do anything, so now they're here. Personal discrimination, um, selling items on for sale sites such as Facebook, mainly those in my hometown, if I'm selling stuff in my hometown, the people who I know who are lower incomes, I choose usually not to sell to them because I either have to wait for the money or I just know that they aren't going to pay me. Um, I don't give to the homeless simply because I automatically assume that they're going to spend it on something else other than what they need. Uh, culture, um, homelessness, the pressing the poor. Examples of this is vagrancy, which is where you can be um, arrested for any reason, just simply because you don't have a home address. Um, this is mainly for businesses. Loitering is sitting on the sidewalks. And that's something else you can get arrested for. Categorization, the poverty cycle. It is assumed that um, if you come from a low-income family that you will, that you will then become in poverty yourself. Uh, views of the Bible, Proverbs 22, 16, oppressing the poor in order to enrich oneself and giving to the rich will lead to only loss. 
My goals are to become more aware, and I will subscribe to this magazine by December 2014, and read poverty, knowledge, social science, social policy, and the poor in the 20th, 20th, yeah, 20th century. Um, this is by the end of Christmas break. I want to accept the poor, and this I would like to volunteer at Salvation Army um, by May of 2015, and collectively donate over $100 or $800 to different charities by the end of the summer 2015. My third goal is to raise awareness, and that is um, taking part in Poverty Awareness Month, which is in January. And also join, it's called the Action Network on PovertyUSA.org. Um, basically, they just kind of give uh, different tips, articles about how to advocate for the poor in your community. My interview was with a 30-year-old white female, and my first question was, can you describe the neighborhood you grew up in? She said the projects. I wasn't really surprised by that. Um, what kinds of things did your family spend money on? And she said, whatever my mother wanted, she never did anything fun for us kids. Um, this was really quick. Didn't want to talk about it. I didn't ask about it. Um, next was, who was your best friend? Are you still in touch? She said yes. Um, what people would you find surprising about you as a teen? And she said, everybody knows everything about me, slash, I was always pregnant. So I, I just was okay. I was kind of <laughs> um, shocked by that. Did you attend college? If yes, which one? She said yes, LLCC, but I dropped out because I kept getting pregnant. Um, I thought kind of threw me. I didn't expect her to be that blunt about it. Did you get a degree in what? She said, um, I wanted a degree in nursing, and then seeing where she's at now, I was pretty surprised for that from where she wanted to be to where she is. Uh, what was most important to your parents? She lived with her mother, mother and she said men. Um, that was, again, really quick. She didn't want to talk about her past. What do you think has stayed the same about you throughout life? What do you think has changed? She said, my drive to be something has always stayed the same, but what I want to be in life has changed. Um, this really inspired me, considering about what she went through and how she still wants to be something. Who is the biggest influence on your career? She said, my children. And um, it really seems like now she has, with that being her answer, that she has her act together. Um, what would be your ideal job? She said master's degree in social work, and that really just kind of connected me with her because I didn't expect that. Uh, do you have any children? So how many? Three girls, three boys, six, 11, eight, seven, six, and four. Um, my initial reaction was, wow, and you kind of you kind of wonder why you're in poverty. Have you ever been married? To whom and how long? First marriage was six years, second time was two years. How did you and your spouse first meet? This one, it threw me. The first one was at a bar, and the second one was at rehab. So I just, that was one of those, again, surprising kind of moments. And definition of happiness, having a home with my children and them being happy and thriving. And I thought this was really sweet. What kind of main lessons have you learned in life? Or, yeah, staying sober, children should always be most important and that they should always come first. And I thought that this was a really good follow-up to the question before. And that is my presentation. Good work, Rihanna. I apologize about not giving you more time frames. I accidentally restarted my own clock, but you did great. Oh. <laughs> Andrew is up. You made me kind of nervous because you stopped. I saw five, and then I'm like, okay, I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. Um, you did really good. If any um, something positive for Rihanna and a constructive criticism, we'll move on to Andrew. I like the interview, like your perspective in the beginning and how it changed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the end. Like I could see you, like oh yeah, and that connection you had. That was awesome. Yep. It seemed like it was a good interaction. Like your honesty. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Y'all expect me not to be honest? <laughs> Good questions. I know well, said you talked about like the first year, first question up here, and the center kind of just kept yeah. spacing. Is that because you didn't know time? Yeah. Okay. Was that rushed? Yeah, you felt rushed. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's okay. Yeah, I, got my, I hit the good questions. <laughs> the ones that everybody wants to know. Yeah, you did good. You did good. Um, any other feedback? Gosh, I keep recording our.